In an interview I did with her all 20 years ago now, I asked Yvonne if she knew as a young woman, when she'd begun to publish, that she was destined to be a poet. Her answer was very interesting. She said at that stage she knew she was writing poetry, but that to be a poet, there was a space she would have to cross. And she would only discover what that space was when she had written her way across it. In part, that space was a gap in history. It was a space where women's voices were not inscribed, where women's voices were not there to be heard. It was also, though, the space that nurtured and shaped and gave birth to the poet's unique voice. Because if there's any one thing you can say about a poet of achievement, then it is that she speaks or he speaks in their own voice. And a voice is not something given, a voice is something discovered. When she began to write, when she became a poet, she understood that she had also accepted certain responsibilities. Responsibility for language, for the language she would use. Responsibility to language, because we all write out of a tradition. But she was writing from a defective tradition, a defective history. She needed to remember lives not her own in her own voice. And I think that's one of the things that gives her poetry a particular heft and savour, that rigorousness. As a teacher, she was famous for the vigour and rigour she brought to the dissection of a poem, to the remaking of a poem, to the revisiting of a poem. And her work will bear that scrutiny. It will bear it easily, lightly even, because she was a superb worker in the craft. But that voice, that voice was not just a voice of reclamation. It was not a voice just that brought in the ghost whispers from outside history and made them clear and loud and manifest in our time. It was also a voice that gave itself to love, to love poetry of a very particular kind, especially the poetry of the love of a mother for her daughters and later for her grandchildren and her love for her husband. She was a great poet of marriage. She famously, notoriously even, entitled one collection Against Love Poetry. I remember the, the stir among the feathery ones up in the high branches of the trees when that book came out, until they read it and they understood. Because it wasn't against love poetry, it was against the diminution of love, the narrowing of love to passionate love between the young. That book, Against Love Poetry, is a celebration of how time is a witness in a long partnership, not an adversary, but a witness. And she encapsulates it beautifully in one of my all time favorite poems of hers, Once. We need glasses at a certain age. Once. The lovers in an Irish story never had good fortune. They fled the king's anger, they lay on the forest floor, they kissed at the edge of death. Did you know our suburb was a forest? Our roof was a home for thrushes, our front door was a wild shadow of spruce. Our faces edged in mountain freshness, we took our milk in where the wide apart prints of the wild and never seen creatures were set, who have long since died out. I do not want us to be immortal or unlucky, to listen for our own death in the distance. Take my hand, stand by the window. I want to show you what is hidden in this ordinary aging human love is there still and will be until an inland coast so densely wooded not even the ocean fog could enter it appears in front of us and the chilled to the bone light clears and shows us Irish wolves, a silvery man and wife, yellow-eyed, edged in dateless moonlight. They are mated for life. They are legendary. They are safe.